At number 10, we have the Car Bump Gang. This sounds less like a scary urban legend and more like a cheesy concept name they had for one of the gangs from West Side Story. Like, oh no, it's Johnny Flames and the Car Bump Boys. Hopefully they don't take my leather jacket and have very outdated opinions on race. That movie's old. But trust me, the legend behind these rumors are much more threatening. Rumors started spreading about a new gang tactic in Houston. A gang member would tail a luxury car for a while until they were at a red light. When they were right behind them, they would play bumper cars a little bit and ram into the back of the car. Not too much, just enough to get the driver to come out so they could exchange insurance information. But this was all a ploy just to get the driver to step out of their car. As soon as they did, gang members would pour out of the gang car like circus clowns and then rob and jack the other person's car. Now it's a little hazy on how true this tactic is, but apparently a group of men in 2004 used this a couple times in a string of crimes, but it hasn't been a widespread gang tactic. But if you ever get rear ended in Houston, maybe just take the loss and drive away. Coming into number 9, we have the pizza delivery murderer. If your job is to deliver pizza in Houston, Texas, then I would say watch out. In the spring of 2019, a rumor was perpetuated that a serial killer and cannibal living in Houston, Texas was apprehended by local police. A Houston local Local claimed that they had seen a man covered in blood yielding a chainsaw. Classic horror movie tropes. The rumor seemed to be confirmed online when an article was published on news site World Daily Report that claimed a Houston resident had killed and eaten 23 pizza delivery men, plus six Jehovah's Witnesses and two postmen, and this was all in the past seven years. The article read Houston police have arrested a man believed to be behind the disappearance of no less than 31 persons in the past decade. Ivan Fedorovich. Yanukovic, 56, could be linked to a number of mysterious disappearances in the area. On further research, though, it seems that Snopes ran an article about this, claiming that the original source was a hoax and that the Houston Police Department executive apparently interviewed was actually a fake. Nonetheless, the pizza delivery killer legend goes on. Aren't hoaxes how urban legends start anyway? At number eight, we have the Glenwood Cemetery, one of the oldest standing cemeteries in all of Houston. The Glenwood Cemetery is obviously filled with ghosts. I mean, the place is a cemetery, and that's just like a ghost meetup group or something like that. A place where lonely ghosts can find friends, find love, or find out that even after they die, nobody likes them. But there's been one ghost that has been seen many times. It's said to be the previous owner of the cemetery. In this legend, the owner was brutally murdered on the cemetery grounds, and his killer was never caught. He now roams alone at night, trying to find out who took his life, or maybe blame the death on some unexpecting victim. At number seven, we have jail for too much support. This story seems so bizarre on so many levels. Apparently back in 2014, there was a guy whose only crime was caring too much. I didn't know you could go to jail in Houston for that. I better not hang out with too many dogs when I'm there. They would lock me up so fast after they see me call the sixth random dog a handsome prince. A story started flying around that a man named Clifford Hall was thrown in jail because he gave his baby mama too much child support. That doesn't seem like it makes sense. Like I want to give my kid as much as possible because he's my kid, I want him to have a great life. Well you're not allowed, you're only allowed to give him the register amount. Now I've read a couple versions of this story. Some people say that it's actually false and that he was actually behind on his child support payments. But a certain group of people swear that this is real and it's proof of laws of injustice against men. But that group of people is men's rights activists. So I'm going to throw the information out there and then you choose who to believe. I mean, I've made my decision, but uh, you. I don't know, men's rights activists aren't usually the most reliable. At number six, we have the Slantia Irish Pub. I wish there was a ghost rule book or something, because I feel like there's new ghost rules every week. Like the ghost of the Slantia Irish Pub, who apparently came over from Ireland, attached to a piece of furniture. That must have been a wild ride for that ghost. But the pub is apparently haunted by an authentic Irish ghost, which kind of seems like a marketing tactic scheme or something like that, to make the pub more Gaelic. Someone came in and was probably like, this is an Irish pub, it doesn't seem very Irish. And the owner panicked and was like, uh, we have an Irish ghost. And everyone was like, ooh, an Irish ghost in an Irish pub? I've never seen that before. The pub also refuses to get rid of the piece of furniture that the ghost is attached to, partly because they don't want to anger the spirit, but also because the phantom has become part of the family. Aw, ghost love. At number five, we have the Rice Hotel Dancing Ghosts. That sounds like my kind of party. A bunch of people who aren't going to let a little death stop them from having a good time. The Rice Hotel has been reported to be haunted almost since its construction back in 1911. There used to be ghosts that would party all night in the building's ballroom. Several guests said they saw what looked like phantom couples dancing around. But the hotel did some renovations to make the place look more modern and they removed the ballroom. But this didn't stop these ghosts from getting down and partying. I mean, they didn't stop partying because of death. You think the removal of the ballroom is going to 
stop them, they went up onto the roof. People living in the surrounding buildings say on certain nights you can see the ghosts up there dancing their afterlives away. I number four, we have getting high in the ball pit. I guess you could say jumping around in a ball pit as a kid kind of feels like drugs. I mean, for kids, it's extremely exciting. You have the sensation of hundred little plastic balls massaging your body simultaneously. But this ball pit took it to the next level. A story started flying around of a young boy named Kevin Archer who was killed by a heroin needle in a McDonald's ball pit in Sugarland. They said that he jumped in and the needle pierced his skin while simultaneously injecting him with a junkie's dose of heroin. But we all know that chain mails are packed full of lies, but they have been claims that the story was written in the Houston Chronicle. However, the news outlet denies it ever happening. This does sound a little like the razor blade and candy kind of urban legend. Also, I don't know if you know anything about heroin addicts, but they don't usually leave full needles of heroin lying around. They usually do them. At number three, we have Patterson Road. A secluded road hidden away in Houston. This road runs adjacent to a civil war battlefield and it seems like the ghosts have never stopped fighting. People driving down the road at night say they have seen glowing orbs floating through the air and have seen ghostly figures dressed in confederate uniforms. And if you really want to kick up the horror level, then you can park your car on the side of the road, turn off all the lights and then wait for the ghost to come and tap on your window. That sounds like a great first date idea. Oh my god, she would love it. At number two, we have the headless ghost. At Christus St. Joseph Hospital, there is a ghost that is doing one of the greatest tropes in haunting history. Walking around all spooky like with no head. There have been sightings throughout the hospital of a ghostly figure that has all his bits except for his head. Some people have even claimed to see the head on its own rolling around like some sort of morbid soccer game. Now whether this ghost is real or not, there is some evidence that make this story much more frightening. Back in 2003, a medical student by the name of Hitoshi Nikado got his head stuck in a malfunctioning elevator and was decapitated. This is frightening on so many levels. The first being that this makes this tale of a headless ghost so much more real and the other being that you can get decapitated by an elevator. I didn't even know that was something I should be afraid of. Now this is a new thing now I'm scared of elevators now. And for the number one spot we have the Jefferson Davidson Hospital. Okay this place is super haunted and it's actually not surprising at all. This place isn't haunted because of all the people who died in the hospital. This place was a hot spot for supernatural activity way before the building was ever erected. The land where the hospital sits was a major cemetery twice. It was originally a place where they buried a ton of bodies back in the 1839 yellow fever outbreak and then it was used for a cemetery for confederate soldiers. It's unknown how many people were buried underneath this hospital but most people speculate it's north of 6,000. That's a lot of ghosts you can see all at one time. Oh my god they're all stuck there. You would be trying to get some rest in the hospital so your body can heal and then there's this conveyor belt of ghosts that just keep trying to spook every five minutes you're like god I'm trying to rest over here I get it boo you're scary at number 10, we have the Servant Girl Annihilator. Now this guy sounds more like a comic book villain from the 80s than something that belongs on an urban legends list. But trust me, the SGA is a great way to kick off this list. Between the years of 1884 and 1885, eight different young women were hacked to death with an axe. The killer was never caught and it was suspected that these crimes were all committed by the same man. This came way before the term serial killer was even coined. The public had no idea what these horrific events meant. Now these killings aren't legend, they did happen. Where the legend comes in, these murders took place three years before there was a hint of Jack the Ripper. Some people think that the servant girl annihilator and Jack the Ripper are one in the same. That when he was done with his crimes in Texas, he felt that the cops were starting to pick up on him so he took off to England to lay low. But his urge to kill was too much for him to ignore and he spent those three years learning how to be a better murderer. And then when the time was right, he he kicked up again and became one of the most famous serial killers in history. And frankly, we will never know the truth. At number 9 we have the Astro Dome with cats. What happens to these giant stadiums when no one's using them? Do they just sit vacant or is there a secret society of cats that take control and have meetings about world domination? Well I don't know if it goes that far but apparently the Astro Dome is lousy with cats. Not only that but the cats dictate some of the events that go on in the Astro Dome. If an event or show comes to the Houston Astro Dome and the cats cats don't like it, they will destroy a bunch of equipment after everyone leaves. We all know how big of jerks cats can be. It's like they enjoy watching our suffering. So if you get the royal thumb down from the legion of felines, you bet you'll never get another booking from the Astrodome. Now the owner of the Astrodome claims there are no cats present in the building, but that just sounds like the cats have gotten all the way to the top and are controlling everything from behind the scenes. Don't trust the cats. At number 8 we have enemy territory. Sitting right in Austin, Texas is the Frost Bank Tower. This place is an 
engineering landmark. Coated in mirrored glass, it stands as one of the tallest buildings in all of Austin. But many of you know that the mascot throughout all of Austin is the Longhorn. One of their biggest rivals is Rice University in Houston. Now their mascot is an owl. The architect who built the Frostbank Tower is from Rice University and there's an urban legend that he built the tower to look like an owl. Did he build this as a monument to the Houston University right in the heart of Austin? That is a prank of monumental standards. I had to put it on this list. From certain angles it does kind of look like the head of an owl at the peak of the tower and one of the best slaps in the face I have ever heard of. Now this legend has never been confirmed and if I was the architect I would never admit to it either. You would never get a job again. But I hope that every time he goes by and looks at this tower this goes on in his head. At number 7 we have the glowing clouds. For anyone suffering from seasonal depression I might have the cure for you. Austin is apparently surrounded by purple glowing clouds. At dusk you can look out into the sunset and it's said that these clouds will be glowing purple. What causes these clouds to glow the luscious purple? Is it some alien spaceship that has some sort of cloaking device and when the sun hits it at the right angle it has a purple light? Is it some sort of radiation that has floated off of Austin and is slowly turning the whole city into X-Men? Well no one really has any idea why the clouds glow purple. The leading theory is that there's lithium deposits in the clouds. On the bright side people say that the purple glow makes everyone in Austin super happy. So if you're suffering from the sads this is the place to go for a quick vacation. There's also the theory that the purple glow is from the government using an experimental mind control drug on Austin to make everyone content, but I'm gonna let everyone at home decide for themselves why it glows purple because no one really knows. At number six, we have the clay pit. Let's move past mind control drugs and right back into ghosts. The clay pit is known as one of the most haunted places in the whole city of Austin. The ghosts that lurk in this establishment have been known to be big pranksters. They will move things around throughout the building and sometimes cause dishes or cups to shatter out of nowhere and when they do so you will hear them giggling. I wonder if they break so much stuff it's like considered in the budget. They're like this month we're gonna set aside $300 for random ghost stuff and $10 for Spotify. It's so unprofessional when a restaurant has Spotify ads. Ugh, I never want to go back. Too fancy. At number five, we have the Mary Moody Northern Theater. Mary Moody sounds so much like Moaning Myrtle that there should be no surprise that there is a lovesick ghost locked away in it. The Mary Moody Northern Theater is attached to the illustrious St. Edward's University and has been home to a tormented spirit for quite some time. It's said that it's the ghost of a woman and she is quite volatile. She will slap, push, and assault some of the people who go through the theater and she will also mess around with all the furniture in the building. If you really piss her off, you might hear her blood curdling scream that will send anyone who hears it running out of the building. Now why is this ghost so hostile? Well other than the fact she's dead, no one really knows. The legend says that this was the ghost of a girl who had a broken heart. She was dating someone in the university who dumped her. She was unable to deal with the waves of sadness and then came into the theater to end her life by hanging herself off the rafters. Some people have said when they've been walking through the theater they've seen a ghostly noose hanging down. At number 4 we have Charlie the Giant Catfish. There have been tales of a 10 foot long catfish that lives in Lake Travis. It's said that the fish is so big that it could eat a man whole and would digest him while he's still alive. This lake monster has apparently been spotted by frightened scuba divers who have come face to face with the beast and lived to tell the tale. But I am here to tell you that this story is only half true. There is a massive catfish that lives in Lake Travis but he sits around 5 feet long. Still massive but not nearly as threatening. Also he has never tried to suck down a man in one piece. But I still don't want to go swimming in there because I don't want to be there when he tries you know? At number 3 we have the Pink Palace. If you're a fan of music history then the Pink Palace is somewhere you have to visit. The building has been standing for over over a century and in the 60s it was a home for vagabonds of all different shapes and sizes. The 60s was a time for cultural revolution and it was homes like this that birthed the minds that would influence the shift in humanity. One of the most famous bodies that ever walked through these dusty rose halls was Janis Joplin. Some people think she wrote many of her songs while hanging out with the bizarre characters that called this place home. And since she's passed her soul has returned to the building. People who've walked through this building have said they've seen her ghost trailing from room to room. Some people can hear a disembodied voice humming her music. A house with famous ghosts in it that's pretty damn cool. Maybe if you're an aspiring musician you can go there and do a little seance and try and summon her for some guidance. At number 2 we have man eating monsters. One of the most famous bodies of water in Austin, Texas is Travis Lake. We just covered that with the catfish. Beneath the surface there's said to be something waiting to crush the bones of any person who's foolish enough to take a dip in the water. There's apparently either one or more massive man eating alligators that are constantly waiting to satisfy their endless hunger. This legend comes from a prank that was pulled by the massively successful author Berkeley Breathed where he released hundreds of newborn alligators into the lake. Now there are a lot of opinions on whether or not this actually happened. 
and some people think that this is 100% true and you should never go in the water. Now Berkeley says this was just something he wrote in the University of Texas campus magazine while he was a student at the school. But I'm going to sit on the safe side on this one and stay on the beach. I'm going to sit in the sun while everyone else takes the risk of being torn in half by a modern dinosaur. And for our number one spot we have missing kidneys. One of the best parts of going to college is the chance to go on endless benders. But here's a cautionary tale for anyone who thinks they can't drink too much. There's a story about a student from the University of Texas. One night he decided to go all out and see if there was a limit to the amount of booze he could consume. He pushed himself to the end of his rope, passed out somewhere random and woke up in a groggy state up to his neck in ice. Freezing, scared and confused, he found a note taped to his face. It said call 911 or you will die. When you find a note like that on your face, you don't ignore it. So he did and paramedics quickly found that one of his kidneys had been stolen. Next time you want to get blackout, remember there might be a monster waiting to take something that you can't get back. Coming in at number 10, we have the spirits of the spaghetti warehouse. At 901 Commerce in downtown Houston, there is a restaurant called the Spaghetti Warehouse. However, Italian food isn't the only thing on the menu. That's right, it seems that actually maybe your pasta may come served with a side of spooks. Back in the day, the Spaghetti Warehouse used to be a pharmacy, and legend has it that one day a pharmacist fell down an elevator shaft and died, which actually is so grim if you think about it. It seems it isn't the ghost of the pharmacist himself that haunts the building, but his wife who died exactly a year later of heartbreak, which makes me feel really sad. It seems like the building may also be haunted by cheeky children. A waitress called Patty Chapper claimed that child spirits tied her shoelaces together. She's seen them regularly. There is an urn cabinet on the second floor of the building and it seems that the children's spirits are most drawn to this spot in the building. Here their voices can be heard as well as their giggles. It seems like the restaurant actually doesn't like the attention it's attracted with the ghostly urban legends. People are sick of patrons coming in and asking where to sit where it's haunted. They would rather the ghost just went away. At number 9 we have Buffalo Billiards. Now we've got a haunted billiards room that sounds like the worst combination imaginable. You're playing pool and it looks like you have the perfect shot lined up and for some unknown reason the ball just swerves to the left. Meanwhile the guy you're playing has been bribing the ghost all night. Well if you're ever in Buffalo Billiards in Austin and you're betting on pool you should bet on the guy who can talk to dead people because this place is packed full of them. There's even an old bartender tradition that when you start your shift once you walk in and everything is set up, you say good morning to the resident ghost Fred and then you pour him a fresh crispy boy. Fred likes it when there's a cold one sitting for him on the bar. If the bartender forgets, Fred will make a big fuss and break a bunch of stuff. Maybe even screw up your pool game. You don't want to mess with Fred. Coming into number 8, we have Iris the Theatre Ghost. I love a good theatre ghost. It seems that ghosts are especially prevalent in theatrical spaces. Maybe it's something to do with the heightened drama. Usually theatre ghosts are the spirits of actors who have died on stage or perhaps been murdered in a historic brawl on the theatre steps. Or oftentimes it's an old theatre patron who absolutely just loved going to shows there or perhaps even a caretaker. Either way the ghost is usually from another area. Era, something historic. Sadly, the ghost of Iris Sif is a relatively new addition to the Alley Theatre. Iris was the building's managing director who was strangled by security guard Clifford Phillips in 1982. It seems that the man had been fired for sleeping on the job, and actually, he was put to death by lethal injection in 1993. Meanwhile, Iris the ghost is said to still haunt the theatre to this day. Coming into number seven, we have the legend of the Owl Witches. It seems that this urban legend isn't specific specifically attributed to just people of Houston, but instead the wider populace of Texas. Nonetheless, there have been some Lechuza sightings in Houston. A Lechuza is, according to legend, a shape-shifting witch who flies through the night hunting for prey. In flight, these witches look like owls, but when they're stopped, they have bird bodies but human faces, so I guess kinda like harpies? The women seem to be hybrid monsters, as in their human lives, they were said to have sold their souls to the devil, who gave them intense magical powers in exchange for their souls. A classic exchange. So how do you know you are in the presence of one of these owl witches? They'll let you know by a series of whistling and baby noises. Those who try and investigate what the noises are will likely become dinner for the owly she witches. The stories of owl witches are most prevalent amongst Spanish speakers in Houston. Have you ever seen an owl witch? Let me know. Coming into number six, we have the seances of La Carafe. It is said that La Carafe, one of the oldest bars in Houston, 
Houston, built in 1866, conducts regular seances to contact the dead. The things that have gone on at 813 Congress Avenue in Houston are said to be enough to scare even the most hardy of drinkers. It seems that the building is haunted by the ghost of an escort called Pamelia Mann. Now she is said to get jealous of attractive females and shows them by giving them a shove down the stairs. I'm like, baby, chill. A figure has also been spotted waving from a fifth story window. Staff who work there have also reported bottles flying off shelves and other strange ethereal sounds. Either way, I have to say, the carafe looks really old and beautiful inside, but definitely a little bit spooky. Coming into number five, we have the Rip in Time. Battleship Texas is located near the San Jacinto Monument, but it has a rich history as one of the US Navy's fleet of fighting vessels, and during its heyday, it had the largest guns of any ship in the world. Blimey. While the ship is a treasured piece of Laporte City pride, there are whisperings in the city that there is something much more mystical going on on board. While there have been reports of a red-headed sailor who haunts Deck 2, that is just small chat compared to the rumour that the trophy room has a strange rip in time and space. A caretaker claimed that she walked through a door in the trophy room only to find herself in a cemetery in France. According to legend chat, this is legit, but who knows, either way it's pretty freaky. Some more seafaring drama at number 4, we have Pirate Jean Lafitte. Legend has it that Pirate Jean Lafitte's ship shows up in the waters of Houston, sailing between New Orleans and Galveston and often up Burnett Bay. Jean Lafitte may have been a pirate, but he helped defend the states against the British in 1815 in the Battle of New Orleans. His pirate ship famously went missing as he tried to capture Spanish vessels. His life and death are hot topics of discussion and the mystery surrounding him makes him the perfect topic for urban legends. Some claim to have found his lost shipwreck, others claim they see him on the shores searching for treasure, and others have spotted the ghost ship in the distance as it sails its old route. I love a good ghost ship, yes. Coming into number 3, we have the sad legend of the killing fields. Since 1970, more than 30 women have disappeared, with their bodies found dumped somewhere between Houston and Gavelston on the I-45 a pretty desolate 50 mile stretch of road which has been dubbed the killing fields as a result of the murders. The ages of the victims range between children who are 12 and women in their late 30s, but the majority have been female teenagers. To this day the murders remain unresolved, with pretty legit suggestions that there might still be a serial killer on the loose. The hellish highway formed the basis of a CBS 48 hour mystery documentary and a 2011 crime movie starring Chloe Grace Moretz and Jessica Chastain. An old favourite at number 2, we have Beyonce and the Illuminati. Beyonce is from Houston and is proud. The star regularly makes trips back to her home city, most recently she was spotted with her husband Jay Z at a Houston Rockets game in a moon symbol jumpsuit. What could this mean? Illuminati can Conspiracy theories have been constant for the star, with many claiming her 2008 hit, Single Ladies, can be played backwards to hear a secret message. Also, a lot of people think her 2013 Super Bowl performance where she delivered her triangle hand symbol was a nod to the Illuminati. Further rumours were fueled at the 59th Grammy Awards held in Houston where Beyonce gave an incredible performance while pregnant with twins, like a seriously incredible performance. Many thought though that the performance's religious symbolism was yet another another nod to the Illuminati. Queen Bey also referenced the quote unquote Illuminati mess in her 2016 album Lemonade. I love Beyonce, cult or no cult, just saying. Finally, coming into number one, an enduring legend in Houston, we have the Houston Horror. Horror, horror, horror. The Houston Horror is a strange story that spans over 40 years and involves the curious raising of a woman's house. In 1953, a 23-year-old housewife named Hilda Walker was sitting out on her porch with her neighbours when they all saw something odd and alarming. Mrs Walker said she looked up over the lawn and saw the shadow of a huge moth. She claimed that her and her neighbours saw something massive flying into a pecan tree. Her and her neighbours thought that the monster was around six and a half feet tall. Now 14 year old Judy Mayer, who was also sat on the porch, screamed in fear and got a square on look in the face of the monster. Now He was described as being manlike but with wings, huge with a strange yellow haze, perhaps even a halo. The incident was reported in local news outlets and caused a frenzy at the time, but nonetheless the story blew over. Weirdly, Mrs Walker's house was raised a few years later to make way for part of the interstate, which had a lot of people claiming government conspiracy. Fast forward 40 years and a similar creature was spotted again by a bear 
Bel Air theatre worker. So, is this Houston's very own Mothman, or is it the same Mothman that was spotted in Ohio and West Virginia? Did he fly on down and stop in Houston before disappearing, never to be seen? Mm -hmm.